Hello, everyone. My name is Wei Yunling. In this uh, presentation, I would like to talk about the representation of Virachana in the Avantamsaka Sutra, or Hua Yan Jing, as it is interpreted by one of its greatest Chinese Buddhist exegetes, Fa Zhang. The Avantamsaka Sutra, or the Hua Yan Jing, contains a strange world. It is a light suffused world where the infinitely great intertwines with the infinitesimal, where even time and space are counterintuitively reconfigured. Scholars uh, do not hesitate to use such words as hallucinatory, fract uh, fractal, holographical. I want to re-engage in this strange uh, Avantamsaka universe, but this time, by introducing the question, who created this world? This question is immediately uncomfortable for the non-theistic worldview of Buddhism has no place for a created God. So how could we discuss the questions to do with creation, which is a theological thing loaded with meaning from the Abrahamic religions? But as it is apparent now, my intention is comparative. And I see the representation of Rachana in the Apantamsaka Sutra as an interesting comparative case. Because while Buddhist Christian uh, dialogue usually emphasize emptiness as the doctrines that separates the two traditions, um, and the, the representation of Rachana in the Apantamsaka Sutra could at least challenge this typical discourse. For instance, in the Chinese Buddhist exegesis, Varachana is interpreted as omnipresent, uh, eternal, and tantamount to the universe itself. While we can also observe a degree of reification uh, in, the, um, in the degree of anthropomorphism in Varachana. Uh, for instance, uh, he is said to have taught the sutra in a specific Buddha realm and from a specific meditation state. So I do see some merits in pushing the representation of Rajana against the Judeo-Christian model of creator to see how far or how closely the two models could approach before or if then will part way. But while this comparative reflection is the starting point for my article, the bulk of my article is the labor of retracing the history of exegesis of Rajana uh, in the Chinese Huayan tradition and of extracting information from one source in particular, that is Fa Zhang's Huayan Jing Tan Xuan Ji, which is Fa Zhang's notoriously long and obscure commentary on the Avantamsaka Sutra. For those of you who don't know, Fazang is the third patriarch of Huayan Buddhism, a Chinese Buddhist tradition known for its obscure metaphysics inspired from the Avantamsaka Sutra. And Fazang was known as the synthesizer who created a metaphysical framework for the tradition and is considered for that reason as the de facto founder of the tradition. It, and it is in Fazan's writing that Varachana was incorporated into a metaphysical framework. Hence the reason that I chose this text uh, as the source for my study. Given the close association between Varachana and the Avantamsaka Sutra, we are bound to be surprised at how scarcely Varachana is actually featured in the Sutra. It's featured mostly in the second chapter and hardly anywhere else. One explanation for this association may be found in the conflation between the name Shakyamuni and Varachana, attested by such lines as when Buddha Varachana became enlightened under the Bodhi tree. This conflation in Buddhist names, as well as other textual particularities, have prompted Huaya exegetes to debate on this issue as early as the fourth century. According to Ji Zhang, it was his master Fa Lang who first posed the question, uh, was the Avantam Saga Sutra taught by Shakyamuni or by Varachana. This debate will continue for centuries and was taken up again by Master Fami and Master Ying, who not only affirmed Varachana and its 10 bodies, I'll talk a little bit more 
about 10 bodies later, who not only affirmed Barachana and the 10 bodies as the preacher, but also used this as an argument for the superiority of the Avantamsaka Sutra. When it comes to Fa Zhang in the seventh century, he very much inherited Master Fami and the Master Yin's interpretation, for it was Fa Zhang's foremost agenda to establish the scriptural ascendancy, the scriptural supremacy of the Avantamsaka Sutra. And there's no way more effective for him to do that than through um, highlighting the superiority of its preacher. But the true achievement of Fazan lies in that he endowed Varachana with metaphysical significance that no one before him had done. He interpreted Varachana in such a way that he came to embody the core of Huayan philosophy. Here I should point out that Fazan's thoughts has an incredible coherency. He applied his metaphysical uh, outlook to all sorts of issues, be it textual, linguistical, even technological. For instance, when he explains the title of the Avantamsaka Sutra, he did it in such a way that the entire Huayan worldview will come out just by him explaining the title, by explaining the characters that compose the title. So even though uh, Fazan did not explicitly put forth a formal theory of Rajana, uh, Fazan's grand coherency throughout his, uh, throughout his writing is the basis for me to extract his, philosophy, his interpretation of Rajana. The first thing to highlight is that Fazan does not discuss Rajana alone almost always in the formulation of the 10 bodies of Varachana, Dushana, Shisheng. Different lists of the 10 bodies could be found in the Avantam Saka Sutra, but they are relatively obscure. So it is really in the exegesis that the 10 bodies became a prominent concept. By favoring the 10 bodies theory, Fazal made an exegetical advancement. That is, he abdicated the classical framework of the three bodies theory. Sansheng, which was a typical body theory that commentators used to discuss uh, scriptural authorship. In this classical framework, Buddha Shakyamuni is usually attributed as the Hua Shen, the transformation body, whereas Varachana as the Bao Shen, the reward body, or uh, Ba Shen, Dharma body. But Fa Zhang has ostensibly parted away from this older framework and adopted a new body theory. In his interpretation of the Ten Bodies, Fazan equates them with all phenomena. Fazan says, Li shi fu yi xian wu jing, the Ten Bodies of the Buddha are established to reveal the infinitude. With this equivalence established, the Ten Bodies is now admitted to Fazan's general philosophical construct and became a vehicle by which Fazan expresses his outlook on the causality among phenomena. And Fazan ex um, explains, uh, presents, his outlook um, through uh, such lines as whatever body in the ten bodies is brought up, all the other nine bodies will also be included. In other words, each body simultaneously includes all the others and is in turn included in all of them. Their relationship is therefore interpenetrating, xiangru, and mutually inclusive, xiangshe. And it was important for Fazan to first establish the 10 bodies as all phenomena, for this exegetical step prepares Fazan to then metaphysically situate Varachana. First, Fazan does not identify Varachana as any of the body theories as, uh, what the, as the philosophers usually do uh, who use the three bodies theory. Instead, Fazan um, consider Varachana as the possessor of the 10 bodies. By doing so, Fazan established Varachana as that which lies outside phenomenon, thus position it on a higher ontological plane than that of the 10 bodies. And the relationship between the Varachana and the 10 bodies in turn came to represent the causality communicating between the phenomenal and the noumenal. 
our discussion thus far has led us to see the dual significance embedded into world China's 10 bodies. On the one hand, the relationship among the 10 bodies represents the mundane causality encompassing phenomenon, while on the other, the rapport between Varachana and his bodily manifestations embodies the transcendental causality underlying the, the, um, uh, between the phenomenal and the noumenal. These two forms of causality correspond to a pair of doctrines that are at the heart of the Huayan philosophy, the Fa Jian Yuan the, in, the independent origination from uh, inter, interdependent origination from the Dhamma Tatu and Xin Qi, the origination from the essential nature. And the last chapter of my articles um, precisely delves into Fa Zhang's philosophy. I did so by evoking Fazan's system of doctrinal classification, Pan Jiao. In his classification, Fazan is critical of the traditions that either reifies phenomena, such as Yogacara, or traditions that overemphasize emptiness, such as uh, Madhyamaka. Instead, Fazan seeks to navigate and circulate between the two extremes. Uh, circulate between two extremes and uh, places emphasis on the dynamics underpinning the transformation between the so-called the phenomenal and the noumenal. And this dynamics nullify the very separation between the two. Furthermore, since all phenomena derive from and are identical to their source, phenomena themselves are therefore identical. Um, so this conclusion, um, in a way, it's a reformulation of the doctrine of emptiness which is obviously not uh, original, but it is original in the way that it is arrived. Fa Zhang uh, does not parrot the Madhya Mahayana doctrine, such as so emptiness is form from its emptiness, but Fa Zhang has instead taken us on an exegetical philosophical roller coaster, taking us in a spiral uh, ascent towards a higher form of truth until we arrive at our familiar Madhya, uh, Madhya Mahayana doctrine of emptiness. But because of the ingenious way that Fazan has led us to it, this uh, doctrine acquired an incredible freshness that could stimulate even a jaded Mahayanist. And, uh, and which, while, uh, conf while confirming to the truth of emptiness also inspired an admiration for the wonderful world of phenomenon. Having summarized Fazan's exegesis and philosophy, I could then make a number of observations. First, textually, Virachana is much less present in the Avantamsaka Sutra than the presence of the God uh, in the Bibles and it's chiefly in the exegesis that Varachana came to be closely associated with the Avantam Saka Sutra and acquired a metaphysical importance. Secondly, Buddhist Christian dialogue typically emphasize emptiness as the distinguishing feature, uh, distinguishing doctrine of the Buddhist tradition. But the representation of, of Varachana in the Avantam Saka Sutra and in its exegesis could at least initially challenge this typical discourse. Third, this initial comparable element, however, is dissolved once we consider it in light of the Avantam Saka universe, which is marked by an incredible fluidity and interpenetration. In such universe, Fazan Averrochana is, is safe to be expediently reified for its solidity is tempered as soon as we considered its 10 bodies, which involve themselves in an incessant interplay with Varajana. This kind of dynamics between the two forestalls any conception of a reified creator. Lastly, I want to say that even though my article has an ostensible comparative agenda, what I have summarized about Fazan's view on Virachana has implications for other topics as well, such as the study of the Chinese Buddhist pantheon, a connection with esoteric Buddhism, for which 
Mahavirachana is the central deity. And if nothing else, this article has reiterated Fazan's philosophy, hopefully through a new angle that is stimulating. Thank you.